so Jack with the track. I first put in uh, a lot on Nextcloud Hub, and uh, I didn't know where to go with it. So I actually added a few subheaders in, and um, I think I'm just going to kind of spitball here because there is a lot going on in Nextcloud. I will tell you that. Well, okay. So so how would you how would you start on a brand new Nextcloud install? Where where would be the place for you personally to start? So the first thing I always do is apps. I, I love adding in my apps. Of course, you can go settings um, just to configure and make sure all your volume amounts are right. Um, honestly, for settings at least, I would make sure you're, vo- you're mounted to the right volume. So I think it's in, let's see here. Yeah, settings and then all the way at the bottom on the very left. I, I'm, I, well, I'll save most of this for in- the integration discussion, but... In system in the system settings at the very bottom of settings, you can basically make sure you're mounted to the right spot. Which at our compose, we already have it mounted for you correctly. But if you're getting it set up on your own, always worth checking out. Also, in that system page, it does show you, you know, usage and uptime and everything else you might want to see about how your instance is running. That's a lot about the administration. Uh, if I were if I had just been handed an instance, I'd say, all right, who's this for? What users do I have on here? Who are my users? Who are my admins? Who's my Who are my group users? Who are my and who are my end users? Basically, just to make sure I can get them set up. Well, why do, why why does that matter? I guess. So, you need to be able to share files, right? That that's for me at least. I use mine with my family, uh, contacts, calendar, and um, file storage. I. The main, you know, the main main use, like, hey, I found this audiobook, check it out. What I usually do is, for myself at least, I'll go in, I'll add the file, I'll create a public folder. So I have the public folder, and I'll just say, hey, it's out there, check it out. Everything under this folder is going to be shared. I don't have to worry about it. I can just say, hey, new link out, check it out, share it. I know in Nextcloud you can choose on a per item basis what you want to share. And you can choose how you want to share and you can be pretty granular about how you share it, who's able to edit it, read, write permissions and everything. And you can get notifications on edits. It, it, it's very feature complete. Like it's, it's kind of exactly what you'd want for sharing files, but I always make mine read only in my environment. Um, obviously if you're in a business environment or you're very highly collaborative environment, it's going to be a lot different, but I always create that public folder and just, switch the settings for it to public after that if i need users i need i I know like you and i both have accounts on there so it's not open to the world per se so we have that out there when we have our file structure set up i guess is where i'd go first or second i should say making sure you got to have the users before you set up the the folders right are you yeah, because because you, you you started out saying that you you shared your public folder with your users. So yeah, haven't haven't gone over the users. I mean, do you you, you obviously don't throw just everything in the public, but like what no, do you... God, no, goodness, no, goodness, no, <laughs> <laughs> like public doc. No, right, <laughs> you don't share. <stress. laughs> oh no, yeah, wait, well, why shouldn't I put everything in public? <laughs> well, not only that, but we have a very specific setup with different permissions that we use for the compositional enterprise instance yeah you'd have to do you want to dive into that a little bit i can't for how those are shared yeah because i i know the the media and the content goes out there and i know it was my under i was under the impression that the jekyll site pulled from the next cloud site and then the mp4 is from the next cloud instance and I know we have the photos up there as well. So I just assumed it was all pulled from there. Now, how that automatically happens, I think you're going to have to dive into. Yeah, that's that's my my own little magic in the background happening there, which is is, is very fun to, to set up. But so we, we actually, uh, on the on the instance we share for this, we have a couple things set up. We have, uh, pr- first of all, we have our own personal files and folders like I, I keep some stuff in my own personal documents folder for you stuff I'm working on uh, currently yeah yeah so that's that's just sitting there that's doing its thing uh, and then 
a lot of what I have in my what would what would amount to my home directory here uh, is is shared between the two of us. And that's an interesting concept too to, to think about it as a home directory because if we think of if we got a brand new computer and we had a directory, you're probably going to have some folders pre-existing in that directory. I don't know where this idea came about, but you're always going to have like a videos directory and a photos directory and like a my documents directory and a downloads directory. So I, I, I kind of treat this as something like that. I tend to to mentally configure it like that in, in my head. Uh, the things that I end up sharing with you, however, are typically things that I, I don't nest within those other directories. If, if it's worth it for us to share it, uh, then I just share it out of my home directory. Now, as you share, like if I were to share a brand new directory with you, it would actually pop up in your home directory. Now it's up to you if you wanted to move it somewhere else and, and you could re-architecture it. And uh, you know, part of, part of it, part of me leaving it here may just be because I'm lazy and don't feel like moving around, but they're there regardless. Uh, and, and we, you know, we have our marketing and our books and our accounting directories shared with each other. You know, that's where we put the uh, GNU cash documents. You know, we have the, uh, the, the, the books that we share uh, with each other that we're going to go over, uh, we share that there. Uh, but then we also have the Our ComposeCast directory. Now, that's not only shared between each other, but that's actually shared publicly. So that is a, a, a public share that anyone can go into and look at and, and browse around uh, as the permissions stand right now. And that houses all the media for the Our ComposeCast episodes. Most importantly, it holds the Our ComposeCast uh, final cut episodes and the image of the, not image of the week, but like, you know, the, the episode images and, and all that, which is actually pulled down, you are correct, using that public link that I am, I just hard-coded into the, the, the code that we use to generate the site, but hard-coded that, that very long, not human-readable, gibberish link, public link, into, into the code, and it goes out. And uh, what's, what's actually cool about that is since there are actually subdirectories of the R ComposeCast folder and all of them are public, uh, I believe it's wgit that I'm using, is able to download them only a certain subdirectory from within that that entire shared directory. So it doesn't have to download the entire, let's see, how big is it right now? 10.5 gigs uh, every time that it does that. It only downloads all of the episodes and all of their associated images. So that it it's a lot slimmer than downloading everything all at once because that does include some of our other things like all of our video promos that don't go on our website, but that we retain a copy of that get after they get put up onto YouTube. So that is actually the difference between, you know, what is a, a share between people on the instance and what is a share b publicly? Public, right? sure. Now there's there's also a third type of share, which is sharing via federation. And I don't think we're going to get into that today, but there How is... How do you use that? So... The way you use that is that you choose a user to be the federated user, essentially. Well, yeah, all you have to do is authenticate as, right? Uh, so you can share it. Actually, do you have to? You may not even have to authenticate. I'll, I'll have to double check that. But you do have to share it with a specific user on a specific Nextcloud instance that has federation enabled. I think it's disabled by default. So that whatever instance is, is there has to enable it. You have to enable yours. And then you have to say, share this with a specific federated user on the specific instance where it is. So like if I were to share andrewcz.com's next slide instance with, you know, jmore.com's instance, right? Yeah. I would have to share it to a specific user on your server and put that in uh, when I create that share. Uh, then you on your instance have to go in, and I believe it's as an admin, you have to accept that. Uh, 
prove it yeah you have to you, not not prove anything Accept it. but yeah. you, you just have to say you just have to say yeah i i do want this share i was expecting it or i do you know al- i will allow it uh, and then once that is approved it will show up for that user on that second server and it is a you know anything can be accessed with the same permission granularity restrictions uh, as is on any other instance I haven't done the federated. I haven't set it up yet, but um, definitely worth noting the difference between the public and the private. Now, I don't know if you set this up on your home, on your computer or not. I have two things. I have a couple things here. So in, obviously, welcome to the podcast. We talk about uh, pictures, diagrams, there we go. graphs. But at the very bottom, there's, I, I do a couple things. At the bottom um, of what? at the bottom of the dashboard. So I guess in the files page. So it has all the files there. I get rid of, I uncheck two boxes. I think it's by default, it's show rich workspaces. I disable it. Okay. And then it shows recommendations. I also disable that one. Uh, And then show hidden files is just, I have it left off. But if you look in the bottom there, there's something, there's a link. It's the web dev link. And this is the thing that I found the most interesting or have used the most. Uh, basically it's based off your username so what i've done is i have so i do have a manjaro instance out there and do you really i I have the uh, yeah i have the i have the next cloud sync app uh, said that next cloud sync app yeah it's the actual the desktop application the desktop application right so i use that for that small workstation that don't get too excited. I use it as it's a kind of like a spin up. Okay. Here's every, you know, here's my Linux environment type thing. Uh, most of the time I'm just SSHing into it, but on my, I do have a Mac and that's what I use as kind of my, I would call daily driver fine. But in the, in any of these environments, you can actually just use that web dev link and essentially create that, I don't want to call it local. It, it's like a local link using the web dev link. So basically you're able to navigate the file. You're able to authenticate to the next cloud instance and then authenticate to, to the server that's out there. And yep. so you're able to navigate those files as if they were, you know, as if it were a map similar to, I'd call it a map drive or you're basically, it's a file explorer to explore the files on the server. Not only that, but you can also so, access it if it's set up correctly, just in a regular web browser, with whatever authentication is required. Yeah. Or token or or, or whatnot. Um, because I I know I actually do the same thing inside of my Wi-Fi. Um, I have a web dev setup exposed to my guest Wi-Fi in case I want to share things with whoever's in the area. That, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's accessible. It's read only, but it's accessible. That's how it should be. I mean, yep, yep. <laughs> you'd have to be kind of crazy to <laughs> make it public. But <laughs> right, I had a couple other things out there. Honestly, those are the two important ones. I will probably have to save apps for an, another day. Oh man, uh, yeah. Because I could. I mean, I could. I could go into like calendar and the pictures app and the well. Uh, the one thing I think I will get into because it is just ready and on there by default uh, is is the stuff that you can do and view and manipulate with a stock setup. Uh, so like, for instance, Nextcloud comes with the, the photo viewer, which is, you know, it, it's, it's weird to think of it as a separate application because you're literally just browsing pictures like you would on any other image site. You know, you're just going back and through. It's a gallery. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually... A separate application that it, on the back end handles that, but that's something that comes by default. So, like any, yeah. So any any kind of pictures are are ready to be viewed and gone through. Um, you know, there's there's other ones for like ebook readers and uh, like we said, like key pass X files. You know, so there's there's a lot you can do. Um, but by default, it at least comes with photos and uh, I think some kind of documentation document reader to a pdf reader i know um if if it doesn't simply use the the browser's own one so there's there's a lot that you can do by default in these uh and and while that's good i think a lot of the extensibility really does come 
from the applications. And you know, maybe that's maybe that's something I, t- I I take on next episode, right? And say, you know, what are what are the must-have applications because that'll make a really easy integration discussion. But I think when when you come down to it, Nextcloud's history is is that you know a couple of years ago they forked from OwnCloud, uh, which was a which started life as a Google Docs alternative replacement. And Google Docs, when it started, was pretty bare bones too. I mean, it was a Dropbox like kind of thing. So at this point you're thinking this is literally just a remote file system for me to have. And, you know, as as Jack's talking about, you know, their web dev integration, you know, I use it for all my calendars. Uh, There's an email client you can have in there. Um, You can share photo albums. You know, there's, there's a lot you can do. There's, there's a lot you can do Um, at, at the core of it though. I think the purpose for having a Nextcloud instance is that kind of centralized location to keep your important documents. Whether that's your important documents with your family, with your friends, with your church, with your tax advisor, it's, it, it, it's a place for you to make sure everyone has what they need accessible to them. And and not even not even as a you know, make sure you have an account, sign up with the service, yada, yada, yada. It's something you can provide to them that you know you have control over and that you know is is going to be there when you need it. Uh, I was actually thinking about this recently. I mean, Reddit got rid of their opt-out option for tracking to serve advertisements. Now, it's, it's actually still kind of hidden there because you can go to old.reddit.com and go back to the old preferences menu and it's it's still there. But for all intents and purposes, you have no choice but to be tracked what you're doing there. Now, I'm not an extremist who would say, well, time for me to get off Reddit because they're going to track me, right? My, my thing is, well, I'm not keeping my personal conversations there. I'm not keeping my personal files on Reddit. I'm not using it. I'm not storing my daily activity on there. I'm not keeping my calendar and all my contacts and all my emails on there, right? If I was, I'd be a lot more concerned. As it is, that's a public forum that I frequent that most of what I do is going to be available to anyone who knows my username. I don't want the stuff that, you know, you and I, you know, throw back and forth to each other to to be publicly indexed by someone. I, I, I don't want it to be available in, in, and searchable by employees of a company, right? That's, that's not what I'm looking for when I'm looking for somewhere to keep my important documents. I don't, I don't want my tax documents to be, you know, sitting on someone else's server. Yeah. I want it to be where I can securely share it with you know the my 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 uh text guy right whoever that ends up being and with nextcloud i can do that with a lot more peace of mind than any other public service is going to give me right and with our compose i mean that's that's why we exist as the alternative to some of these other services that are let's face it mainly not privacy conscious. They have a mainly an ad based rev revenue. I mean, the incentives are not aligned there. And, and, and as we discussed about the terms of service are changing almost day to day, but, but that, that aside, what, what I'm looking for when I'm talking about next slide to someone is, is really a need for, I need somewhere to host my personal stuff. Where can I do that? That is our solution when it comes to that's that's our answer that's our answer next cloud is our answer for that we already talked about it before but it's there's no limit right there's no bounds so i think the good example was you know the old bait and switch well you sit you know google photos it's kind of harps on that well it was free all the way up until oh well guess what we hit critical mass now it's not free we know we can charge you for this so we are kind of thing um and then as another personal anecdote Last week, just a lot, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, my dad blew away all his contacts on his phone. 
and he, he said, yeah, make sure to take backups. <laughs> That's That was a text. That was a text. Make sure to take backups. <laughs> we were like, why? What happened? He's like, just lost all my contacts. <laughs> it's like, ooh. So he was like, I think he was able to recover up to a certain point, but just awesome. It's like, well, and that's honestly where I'm going right now. After he said he lost everything, I'm pretty bad about backups. I'll admit, but I want, I need that server, that central location for me to put, you know, all my calendar information and dump all my contacts into just dump everything into it. And for me, you know, and I, I think we're probably going to have to have a calendar and context discussion because for me, that's a solved problem, right? So that's that's something we've I've already been able to architect away uh, over any device I would want, and from any point in the world, yeah, without without even any device I own, 